how many of you know that sometimes it's not Satan that is after us sometimes it's not Satan so when we face bad things sometimes it's just life it's just life life doing its stuff some of you are still standing but life wants to knock you down but you're still standing oh 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 I, I, I have people I have people friends who tells me they'll say I'm your I'm your I'm your die or ride I, I'm your ride or die pastor I got your back I'm your Omi, yeah, your boy. And when trouble comes, they're the first to bail out on you. Oh, oh, oh can I get a witness in this house? I, 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 I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about Big Mama. I, I'm not talking about Shikwit and, and Shinene them. I, I, I'm talking about I'm talking about on Christ the solid rock I stand because how many of you know all other ground is what oh, oh I can't hear you is what all right I haven't started preaching yet just in case you're not familiar with this house and you're wondering where we are right now in the service this is just the segue between praise and the reading of the Word of God so I have my Bible open to Romans chapter 1 let me get this thing going because I really have so much to unpack for you this morning Romans chapter 1 hallelujah as we continue in our series know thy God know thy God Romans chapter 1 verse 8 verse 18 I'm gonna start from verse 18 Glory to God. And Christ the solid rock. Mm. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them for God made it known to them for since the creation of the world is invisible attributes its eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen been understood through what has been made so that they are with no excuse for even though they know or they knew God they did not honor him as God or give thanks but they became futile in their speculation and and their foolish heart was darkened professing to be wise they became fools exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of ah. <laughs> I can't even say it form of a corruptible man and of birds and four footed animals you, you, you see how they become so foolish crawling creatures verse 24 therefore God gave them over in their lust in the lust of their hearts to impurity that their bodies might be dishonored among them for they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever amen verse 26 for this reason God gave them over to degrading passions 
for the women exchange the natural function for that which is unnatural in the same way also the men abandoned their natural function of the women and burned in their desire toward one another men with men committing committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their hero and just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer God gave them over to a depraved mind to those things which are not proper being filled with unrighteousness wickedness greed evil full of malice murder strife deceit malice gossip slander hatred of God disobedient to parents without understanding untrustworthy unloving unmerciful and although they know the ordinance of God that those who practice such things are worthy of death they not only do the same but also give earthly approval to those who practice them Does that sound Does that sound like what you read in the newspaper or what? Or what you see on CD TV? It could even make a good Jerry Springer show. But I just read the word of God to you. What you see happening all around you today. I just read it here from the Word of God that was written over 2,000 years ago. Isn't that something? And we're still saying there's no God. And we're still saying there's no God. Wow. Wow. You better read hard and fast your Bible before you get overtaken by current events because if you're not in the right frame of mind and you don't know what is going on you'll be overtaken but but thank God he's already given us his word so we won't be caught aware of all that is going on around us I just read to you the word of God as you're taking your seat I want you to shake the hands of the person sitting next to you shake their hands like you're gonna shake it off and say to them I'm so glad to be sitting beside you this morning cuz cuz I'm your friendly I'm your friendly neighbor I'm your friendly neighbor you may be seated you may be seated amen you may be seated today my assignment is not particularly an easy one over the past few months we've been trying to go deeper in our understanding of who God is trying to uncover from Scripture those unique attributes that makes God God all by himself I, I don't think anybody in here would have would have had a problem with me speaking all this time about a, a God who is omnipotent all-powerful God after all who wants a weak impotent God I don't want to serve a, a weak God. I, I don't want to serve a God that I'm powerful than. Do you? I, I don't for a moment doubt if anyone here wouldn't want a God who is omniscient, a God who is all-knowing, or a God who is omnipresent, all-seeing who is not just only there for you in times of trouble 
but we can actually do something about that thing which is troubling you. I want a God like that. And no one here can deny that it's a good thing to know a God who is omni good and all loving. So, so what I'm saying is, all we've seen so far is good. Tell your neighbor it's all good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But my assignment to you this morning is not an easy one. Today I want to talk to you about the wrath of God. <laughs> I, I want to talk to you about the God who is also a consuming fire. <laughs> wouldn't, you, wouldn't you all say last Sunday was good? If you went here, you missed a good one. You need to get a DVD or watch it on WHBC TV YouTube. We had Lady Goma. We had Lady Goma visit us here and, and, and all heads were turning as she walked in at the marvelous demonstration of God's unfailing love to the unlovables. So last Sunday we saw the good side of God. His love side. But this Sunday there's the other side of God. We must see the wrong side. His wrath. I, I say we must see because this is the other side of God we all want to run away from because it's terrifying. But if we don't stop to take a look at it, we will be left with an incomplete outlook of God. It's like before I married my wife, I saw all a good side. It was impressive. Oh, oh, any French person here? My French people have gone. I was going to say, what's, what's, what's impressive in French? Oh, you're here. It was impressionnant. <laughs> A good side was impressionnant. I, can't, I don't have that accent. You do. I, I, I mean, this woman would give me a car to drive. Because I was, I was a student in Bible college at that time, I didn't have a car. I had my foot wagon. And she would, she would give me a car to ride, and, and I would ride into school in style. And, and, and she would give me money, and, and she would buy stuff for me. And, and where are my brothers in this house? You know when a, a girl really loves you? It was a good, impressive sight. But I tried hard to make her show me a crazy side too. So I know what I was saying I do too. Before I say, what did I do? I tried. There, there are times where, trust me, I'm a counselor. So, so I'll put her in a situation where I, I, I want to see how she's going to react. And I wanted her to, to react negatively. So I, I put her in a laboratory. But she didn't know it. But, but I was trying to size her out. So I could see how crazy she can be before I marry her. I wanted to get a complete picture of her. The whole story. Not just half of the story. If you're planning to get married, I just gave you a tip for free. <laughs> if a girl is wearing a t-shirt 
that says in big letter, I'm the world most craziest girl. Marry me. <laughs> you at least know what you're getting into. Or if a guy comes and is wearing a t-shirt with a big sign that says on it, I'm the world most dead beat guy. Marry me. Well, you at least know what you're getting into. I say that because it's our human tendency to want to see only what we want to see. Some of us just want to see the good side. We, we, we don't want to see the bad side or, 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 or the crazy side. Am I talking sense here? Oh, oh, we could all stay. We could all stay on the love side we were on last Sunday. Who, who doesn't want to see the good side of God? His love side. His love side is captivating. It's, it's captivating. It's, it's, it's fascinating. But how many know? How many here know that every love side also have its companion the hate side oh, oh have you ever have you ever loved somebody and you hate that person oh no 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 talk to me now talk to me now have you ever loved somebody I, I, i'm talking about love hate <laughs> okay P put the life point up you're doing well you can't truly appreciate what love is until you know what hate is. Stop and think about all the relationship in your life. You can't talk about the love of God without an understanding of the wrath of God. You, you can't appreciate how much God loves you until you know how bad you really were before he loved you. <laughs> how can you understand forgiveness? How can you understand forgiveness if you don't know what you've done or acknowledge what you have done that needs to be forgiven. Oh, oh you're not talking back to me this morning. Oh, oh, I know we don't talk about, we don't talk about the God who is a consuming fire in the church anymore. We, we, had, we rather have sermons. We are rather talk about sermons on seven tips to becoming a better you. Or, 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 or let's talk about seven ways to fireproof your marriage. Or, or better still, let's talk about how to get rich. Or, or, it's true what uh, um, Brother Neil said. If we invite Bill Gates to come into this place right now, or Donald Trump, to come and give us business tips, do you know the fire department will shut this place down? Because of all these people we so this place, you won't even have standing room. But sermons on the wrath of God? When was the last time you heard a message on sinners in the hands of an angry God? Oh, that was a message that a preacher in the yesteryears by the name of Jonathan Edwards preached to his congregation in England. This guy was preaching about how how, how people are dangling. They're dangling over hell. Like that, they're dangling over hell. And people were just crying in that congregation who heard the message. And everybody was crawling as though the fire of hell was tormenting them. And they were running to the altar and saying, what must we do to be saved? When, when, did you, when was the last time you heard a message like that? Or, or better still, when was the last time you heard a new song 
on a terror of God. Oh, I, I bet you hear thousands of songs on God, the God of love and mercy and forgiveness. But have you heard a song about the terror of God? Oh, Mary and I, we looked everywhere as we're getting ready for this worship this Sunday. We looked everywhere to see what song, what worship song we can sing that will go with the message. Can somebody tell me how many we got? You're right. Nada. And yet, do you know that there are more references in the Bible on the anger on the anger and the fury and the indignation of God than they are on his love. Go home and check your concordance. I did mine in my study. I was blown away. Jesus spoke more about hell than he spoke about heaven. No, 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 church. Whenever the Bible talks about the love side of God, it also talks about his angry side too. That's why I have to talk about what I need to talk about to you this morning. Albeit, it's not an easy one. I, I, I know you all, you all won't be shouting and clapping this morning. But church, is it okay? Is it still okay if I preach the word of God? Is it okay if I preach the truth? The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And so help me God. For I hear Paul say in Romans chapter 11 verse 22. Behold. He says behold. Meaning, take a good look. Behold the kindness. That's the good side of God. Everybody say the good side. And the severity. <laughs> that's the not so good side. Everybody say that's not the good, not so, good so good side. Mm hmm. You don't want to make God mad. He is a consuming fire. Paul says, both sides, the love side, which is the kindness side, and the cutting off side, which is the severity side. Paul says, both sides are two sides of God. They go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. They, they, they're like, like, like love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like a horse and carriage. Well, you can't have one without. I, I feel like married with children this morning. So, so in our text this morning, the Apostle Paul, in his, in his dramatic doctrinal treatise to the Romans, says in verse 18 of chapter 1, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. First, let's get a clear understanding of what this wrath is not. Because this is where most of us go crazy and stumble. This is where we all break out in rash, talking about how, how can a loving God, how can a loving God be a hungry God? What is the pastor preaching about? God, how can a, a loving God send people to hell? True, 
the Greek word for wrath in verse 18 is the word oge. Everybody say oge. Yeah, yeah. You're all speaking Greek now. The word indicates the deep-seated anger of God, the deep-seated wrath of God against sin. Now, notice Paul says, this wrath is the wrath of God. Meaning, it's not like your wrath or my wrath. It isn't when you get angry. It's, it, 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 it isn't like when you get angry. It isn't like when, when, when we're ticked. When some of you get mad, and I've seen some of you get mad, you see stars. You blow up the handle. And you start talking about, I'm sorry. I'm hot-tempered because I, I have my grandparents' Irish blood in me. All of a sudden, you become Irish. I, I, I heard... I heard there was an ad in the newspaper, in the classified section of the newspaper, and it reads, wedding dress for sale, never worn, will exchange for a 38 caliber pistol. <laughs> now, that's some woman who was promised marriage, but jinxed, and she's angry. And ready to kill someone. No, no, no. God's wrath in the Bible is never the capricious, self indulgent, vicious anger that we humans so often lash out. God's anger is not like that. Like the boss who got grouchy on one of his workers. And the worker got mad and went home. And, 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 and he's mad at his son. And his son went out and kicks the dog. And the dog runs down the street and bites the first person he saw. Guess who? The boss. <laughs> And on and on it goes in vicious cycle. Church, God is only angry where anger is called for. It's important that you know that. His anger is not anger against the next person he happens to see that gets in his way when he's having a bad day. No, no, no. His anger never leads him to foolish, impulsive actions, just as his love doesn't make him go lusting like you and I would lust. What is his anger? Put it up. What is his anger? His anger is a holy anger. There's something called righteous anger, you know? Oh, oh this is good preaching. This is good preaching. Just as his love is a pure love, his anger is a pure anger. How could God be good if he turned blind eye to evil and say, oh, I understand. Boys will be boys. If he did that, we'll all kill each other. We'll all be dead. I always get people, I always get people who will say to me, I get people who will say to me, you know what? If I was God, I'll just let everybody have the hook. I mean, what is this bloodthirsty God in the Bible about? First of all, my answer to you, you're not God. 
and thank God you're not God. And here is the problem with your let's all sing kumbaya and, and, and go whoop the race. He, 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 here's the problem. Here's the problem. God is love. Would you all agree with me that God is love? All right. It was well established last Sunday. But you also know that this God who is love is also a, a just and righteous and holy God. So God cannot be holy and not get angry at evil. Prophet Habakkuk in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13 says, speaking of God, he says, Thine eyes are too pure to approve evil, and thy, thou cannot, thou cannot look on wickedness with favor. He can't. Meaning, God is good and loving, but his goodness means he cannot let evil and sin go unanswered. He will deal with sin. Can you imagine a thief just broke into your house and stole all your valuables? Help your boy out here now. How many of you have gotten stuff stolen from you? Or, or maybe I should ask, how many of you have valuables? <laughs> now, don't worry, I'm not sizing you up. I'm not going to come in and, oh, my heart, I wonder. No, 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 no. How many of you got valuables? Okay. What if they cut the thief and the police took him before a judge? Remember, you've been violated. You, you, you've had all the stuff taken and ripped off you and, and priceless stuff. And then the judge says, the judge says, as he's looking to the, the thief, the judge says, you know, you know what? I can understand you, you had a dysfunctional childhood. Your father let your mama, your father left your mama when you were two. Uh, and your mother was struck on antidepressant. And you probably need the stuff you've stolen from the Morgans more than they need it. Case dismissed. <laughs> you should see Charlene's hairbrow. He went up. Pee! Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. What would you say to the judge? No disrespect. You're probably thinking he's been smoking some crack cocaine or something. You'd want justice, wouldn't you? What if it was the life of somebody that you love that the thief stole? I know some people, of, I know some of you here at Wilma who have lost a son or a daughter to the horrible tragedy of murder. And the pain is real. And you're wondering if, if true justice will ever, ever be served. Well, I got good news for you. Habakkuk says to tell you, your God's eyes are too pure to approve evil. Someday, the righteous God would give you the justice that is due you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because Exodus chapter 34 verse 7, Exodus chapter 34 verse 7 says, He is the God who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquities, transgression, and sin. Yet, He will not leave the guilty unpunished. Hallelujah. Even in our, in our feebleness, even in our frailty as humans, we, we, we expect 
people to be outraged by gross injustice and cruelty. We expect true justice. Won't we all be called wicked if we don't show some indignation at the crime committed against Tim Bosman, Bosman a few weeks ago? Won't people say something is wrong in this society if we, we're not moved by it? We, we all felt repulsive. We felt repulsive at such a heinous crime. Why? Because we have a sense of justice. So, so, don't you think a just and holy God ought to hate evil too? The same way God is perfectly angry with sin, with a holy wrath. Albeit, his anger is not perverted, perverted like ours is. His anger is pure. Everybody say pure. pure. So, for the remainder of our time, let me share with you two vices. I could share three from this text, but let me share with you two vices in this text that really demands the wrath of God. Everything that you can think of under the sun that ain't right would fall under these two categories. Anything you can think of. Any vice. Church, are you ready to receive? Number one, God's wrath demands or is being revealed to the ungodliness of men. The ungodliness of men. Ungodliness is the first vice that really demands the wrath of God. Look at Romans chapter 1 verse 18 again with me. Paul says, for the wrath of God is revealed. See? It's revealed, meaning it's not hidden. Meaning God is not fooling around with it. And that's why I have to preach it and you have to hear it. It's revealed. Revealed against what? Against what, church? Oh, I can't hear you. Against what? All ungodliness. Everybody say ungodliness. This is against those who are taking God lightly. Those who are living their lives like there's no God. Do you know folks like that? Uh, uh, this, this, these are folks who know the truth. Verse 18 tells us. But are suppressing the truth. See, you can know the truth and still be in bondage. <laughs> oh, knowing the truth itself is not what sets you free. See, we often misunderstand what Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 32. Look at it. John chapter 8, verse 32. When Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will what? I, I know you all love to quote that verse. But really, it's not the truth that sets you free. Oh, knowing the truth, it's helpful. But that's not what sets you free. Come on. How many of you here know people who know the truth, but they're still living like the devil? D don't raise your hand. Because the person you're thinking of may be watching WHBC TV, and then they see your hands up because you jinx them and then you get in more trouble. Just nod if you know what I'm talking about. Just nod your head. We read verse 32 of John chapter 8 and we forget to read verse 31 first. Don't jump at one verse before you read the verse before. Always read in context. Verse 31 of John chapter, 31, chapter 8 says... If you abide in my word, then you are truly my disciples. Then you will know the truth. Then the truth shall set you free. But we jump to verse 34, verse 32, before we get to 31. 
and we go, I know the truth. Oh, I love the Lord. Oh, Sister Agnes, the Lord is good. No, 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 no. You look at it very carefully. Paul says, there are some folk who know the truth, but they're suppressing the truth. And because of that, they're still in bondage. So knowing the truth is not what sets you free. It's knowing the God of the truth. Oh, yeah. Amen. What was the truth being suppressed? Keep reading verse 19. Verse 19 of Romans chapter 1. Keep reading. Paul says, because that which is known about God is evident within them. For God has made it evident to them. This, Paul is saying, this is what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, God has put something in us called conscience. But even if your conscience is dead, you know some folks who have no conscience at all? They can sin at will and it won't even bother them. Uh, it's, it's, it's like... It's like when you turn off your alarm in the morning, your clock, your alarm clock in the morning, and they, they've turned off the conscience. But Paul says, even if your conscience is dead, you still don't have an excuse to be living the way that you're living like there's no God. Because verse 20, for since the creation of the world is invisible attributes, is eternal power, and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through his creation. So you have no excuse. They are without excuse. In other words, only a fool would think they got here all by themselves. It reminds me of the story of a group of scientists. We went to God and said, God, we've decided that we don't need you anymore. We can clone people. We can do heart transplant. We can do those all, all sort of things that people once considered to be miraculous. We don't need you anymore. And God listened to them patiently and said, okay, very well. I want to challenge you to a man-making contest. The only rule is you have to make man from dirt. The scientists were so excited, they, they took on the challenge. And, and they quickly reached down and picked a handful of dirt. And God said, wait a minute, not so fast. Go get your own dirt. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody here, whether you think you're your own God or not, God is still God. So go ahead and get your own dirt while you are here too. If you've created one. I mean, all you need to do is take a good look around you and you see God's revelation in creation. Do you know how many galaxies that there are in this, in this, this universe? Do you know? Billions and billions of galaxies. Let me show you something. I have, see this curtain? Can you ever see this curtain? Let's, let's imagine this curtain is the whole universe. Okay, imagine with me. I have a pin in my hand. Can everybody see the pin in my hand? All right, yeah, you can't see it. Don't worry, you're not blind, you can't see it. But I've got a pin. Let's set this pin in my hand. The head of the pin, not the whole pin, the head of the pin. Let's say the head of the pin in my hand is Canada. Mm -hmm. Maybe North America. <laughs> Let's say the head of this pin is Canada. That's Canada in proportion to the size of this universe. You can't even see Toronto yet. 
That's how big our God is. The one who the Bible says spoke the world into existence. He said, let there be. And there was. And you're still thinking you got here all by your crazy self. Oh, do, do you know, do you know if, do you know if the earth's axis was slightly in one direction, we would freeze to death? And if it was tilted to the other direction, we would fry like Kentucky Fried Chicken? But who did you think had gone to a whole lot of effort and trouble to hold up everything in delicate balance so we won't freeze to death or burn up our life? Everybody shout God. Paul says, is this God of the universe that the ungodly are trying to suppress? So our children can't say the Lord's Prayer in public school anymore. You can't even say Merry Christmas to the people you work with anymore lest you be charged of political incorrectness. And you know why the ungodly are suppressing the truth? Because they don't want God to be God anymore. We, we better don't let him call, call, call us out on our sin then we, we won't have to answer him. The devil is a liar. Jesus is still Messiah. Look, give me the lifeline. Have you noticed, no matter what the world is doing to get rid of God, have you noticed God isn't going anywhere soon? Because he's here to stay. He's the ancient of days. He was here before you got here, and he will still be here after you're gone. Amen. I lost somebody. Oh, I, I told you you won't be clapping this morning. And that's all right because God is working in you. Let me, let, me sh let me show you how his wrath was revealed in history. Because some of us, we think we're God. <laughs> and we're not. This is where the rubber meets the road. We, we think we're God of our own lives. We, 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 we exchange, Paul says, we exchange the glory of God for incorruptible things. Like, like, like us. Adam and Eve wanted to be their own God. God said, the day you eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil is the day you die. And they ate from it and we've been dying ever since. Oh, let me show you how God revealed his, his wrath in history to you. God's wrath was poured out on Sodom and Gomorrah. You remember? Man wasn't listening to God in the day of Noah. And he drowned the entire human race in the flood. Another way God poured his wrath on man. And only Noah and his family survived the deluge. Pharaoh. Ooh. Pharaoh, when he was, when he, he and his armies they, 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 they drowned in the Red Sea. Pharaoh and his armies, they drowned in the Red Sea when they were chasing God's people. Oh, I got a good one for you right now. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't you chase me now. One, your neighbor, tell him, don't you chase me now. God's wrath was constantly being revealed in the pages of Scripture against sin. You say, Pastor, but that was the Old Testament. This is the New Testament. God in the Old Testament was the God of anger. But God of the New Testament is the God of love. Yeah? Yeah? Can, can, can I read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29 for you? It says, for our God is what? Oh, church, I can't hear you. It's what? In the New Testament, he didn't say, for our God was a consuming fire. Past tense. He said, our God is, present tense, a consuming fire. So don't play with God. God doesn't play. 
if you're not hearing from him yet, it's because he's patient with you. One day he's going to give you over. Cut off. As verse 24 and 26 says. Listen to it. Verse 24. Therefore, God gave them over. Verse 26. For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. That's lesbianism. Verse 27. And in the same way, also the men abandoned their natural function of the woman and burned in their desire toward one another. That's homosexuality. Meaning God did not create Adam for Steve. God created Adam for Eve. Oh, oh, I'm not done yet. Let me keep reading. Verse 27. And receiving in their own person the due penalty of their what? Error. Could that be AIDS? Could that be AIDS? Or every other known STDs that we know. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, y'all yeah, yeah, don't get quiet on me now. Oh, oh uh, yeah, they're going to hear this on the radio. Maybe I'll go to jail by myself. <laughs> I, I, I told you this is not an easy one to preach. Don't, don't you see it in our world today? Isn't this, this where we live? That's the second vice that really demands the wrath of God. Number two, put it up. The second vice, I'm almost done. The second vice that really demands the wrath of God is this. The unrighteousness of men. The unrighteousness of men. Now, this second vice is quite different from the first vice. Because ungodliness is an affront, Sister Eislin, ungodliness is an affront against God. Ungodliness. You see God in there. A sin committed against God. Whereas, Sister Diane, unrighteousness is the sin we commit with one another. Right. Relationship. Right. Unrighteousness. But see how the two connect? See how the first vice leads to the second vice? Let me show you. Paul is saying, when you refuse to acknowledge God to be God, listen to this very carefully. This is so powerful. Paul says, when you don't see God to be God, soon you won't know how to be human anymore. When you, 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 see, you see how everything is just deteriorating. When you don't know God and you don't acknowledge Him to be God, how can you then have a proper view of who you are as human? Paul says, women won't know how to be women. Men won't know how to be men. We will be sexually confused. Does that sound like the times we live in, somebody? Yes. When women are doing the thing with women. And the men. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about that one. Paul says, when you start seeing unrighteousness. Come on in, guys. Come on in. Come on in. Don't stand. Paul says, when you start seeing unrighteousness behaviors like this happening around you. When you start seeing gross things like this happening around you. Men going after men and women going after women. Paul says, know for sure. Know for sure. That's the wrath of God being poured out. It's a sign that you're living a world in a world that has gone mad. Because it's come to the boiling point. It's come to the tipping point now, everybody. Where God is saying, you want it? You got it. 
you want to live like hell go ahead and have a ball my brothers and my sisters see god isn't the one who sends people to hell people by their choices choose to go to you nowhere not god god said you want it go ahead that's what it means he gave them over he took off his restraining power and said oh i'm not, I'm not even gonna i'm not gonna strive with you anymore don't make god mad three times in this text the bible says god gave them over verse 24 verse 26 for this reason god gave them over verse 28 god gave them over three times to a depraved mind three times but paul says that's not even the worst yet he says god in his wrath would even make the world go more crazier oh you say pastor how in the world it, you say what can be more crazy than that what can be more crazier with men going after men and women going after women oh i'm going to show you what is more crazier it's right here and it's happening in this day and age are you ready for this verse 28 he would give them over to a depraved mind and verse 32 god says you know the worst of god's wrath has come when people are doing sick things sick gross things and other folks are <laughs> other folks are talking about let's legalize what they're doing <laughs> like, like 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 let's legalize same-sex marriage read it but also give earthly approval to those who practice them does that sound like where we are the word of god oh, oh 50 years ago who would ever say the government will say let's clap for them it's happening now god said the wrath is wrath is going when you see this happening no quickly that you better flee from the wrath to come because now god is saying i'm just going to take off i'm going to rest I, I, i'm not going to restrain anymore i'm going to let Shoo. oh good lord church do you see why we cannot play with sin god is a consuming fire god oh i love to talk about god who is love and holy and mercy you know me I, 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 I told my wife this. I nearly didn't want to preach this message. Because I know you all be quiet like you had this morning. <laughs> and, and, and quietness sometimes can be so, so deafening. Silence can be deafening. I don't, like, I don't like when you guys are all going, Yes, Lord, Pastor, preach it. Yeah, bring it on. But when you're quiet like this, it bothers me. But that's good. It's a good bother because the wrath of God is not, God is not playing. God doesn't play games. And you know, that's why as a church we can't play games. We can't play games. It's one thing for the world not to know better. What about us? We don't even call sin, sin anymore in the church. What used to be sinful became a sickness. We say they're sick. And now it's acceptable. Abortion is called choice. Two people who are living together are not married. They call it cohabiting. Greed. Greed is called industriousness. We don't know how to call sin sin anymore, even the house of God. No, no, no. Church, we got to take the wrath of God seriously. 
He is a consuming fire. Lord, help us as I close. You say, Pastor, teach me. How can I escape this wrath of God in my life? Teach me, Lord. The only fireproof escape I know to tell you is to give you, is to say to you, give your life over to Jesus today before it is too late. Oh, I know you go to church. I'm not talking about that. You, you can't stand before God and say, oh, my pastor never tell me this thing that his wrath is real. No, 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 no. You remember the story of Lazarus and Dives? <laughs> Dives went to hell. And he said, please, Father Abraham, tell Lazarus to go back and tell my brothers. No, no, no. Jesus said in that parable, do you remember? You remember? He said, no, they have the prophets and the word with them. They don't need a dead person to come back and tell them. And so let me tell you this morning, you can't stand before God and say, oh, I didn't hear about this. You say, remember June the 2nd. 2013, your pastor preached it. It's like this. Let me close with this story. There was a king who had a very wicked citizens. They were wicked, atrocious. And he issued a law that says anybody who violated the law would have both of their eyes gouged out. The first young man that they brought before the king that violated the law was brought to the king for judgment. And lo and behold, the king looked up and it was his son. The king said, Oh no! Oh no! He's in the dilemma. Justice says he got to gouge the boy's eyes out. But his love says, this is my son. I can't put his eyes out. So he got justice on one hand and love on the other hand. What is he going to do? You know what he did? He pulled one of his son's eyes out. And when he was done, he pulled one of his own eyes out. So whenever you saw the two of them together, you saw justice and you saw love. You saw justice because two eyes were gouged out but he also saw love he loved his son enough to give up one of his own eyes so this king had a good balance between justice and love justice and love what justice demands and what love gives wouldn't you say that's a a good story on justice and love but wait a minute there's more tell your neighbor wait a minute there's more oh yeah somebody here I came to tell you that the God of the universe went one step further than that king in my story the Bible said Jesus paid it all all to him I owe. Jesus paid it all for you so you won't have to endure the wrath of God. Because you see on that old rugged cross was where God's justice and love kissed each other.
if you haven't given your life over to God, let today be the day. Don't play with the wrath of God any longer. If you haven't heard from Him yet, it's because He's patient with you. Run to Jesus today.